initial baby step, bullish sign that this whole range, whole right, this whole downward range could finally be broken. And that's kind of what we segue going into this week. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly update or weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a start uh, to their weekend. Pleasant start, beautiful uh, weather we're having. So knock on wood, life is good because again, we're all alive and we are all healthy. So let's talk about the market. We are um, right on the doorstep of the elections, okay? Um, which means that a lot of fund managers uh, a lot of index funds, a lot of hedge funds, uh, or even a lot of more experienced individual traders are pretty much in a, in a holding pattern. Okay, I don't think anybody can turn around and say, look, we know exactly what's going to happen uh, after November 3rd. We know exactly what's going to happen uh, with the whole stimulus bill that, by the way, we had a you know, a line in the sand last Tuesday, and here we are Saturday morning, and nothing uh, has been done yet. So all lines in the sand are just as, as much as worthless as anything else. So there's a lot of uncertainty, okay? Uh, yesterday, we had the highest spike in corona cases uh, after this point. So there's a lot of things up in the air. And what you're, go you're going to see when we started seeing um, into the latter part of last week, Thursday into Friday, there's going to be many days that you are really going to find a lack of value, okay? And that's kind of what we saw on Friday. It was one of the more uh, slower sessions that I can remember in a very, very long time, especially uh, in the beta, the tech space, and we'll get to that uh, in a second. But what I think is gonna happen between now and the election day, and, and again, like I said in previous videos, I, I don't think uh, once the election results are released, I don't think it's going to be one of those, you know, smooth transitions that uh, Trump or Biden is going to bow out gracefully uh, with the results. I think there's going to be a lot of dispute. I think there's going to be a lot of doubts and there's going to be a lot of indecisions of what's happening next with the leadership of our country. Um, and these are all things, again, Wall Street doesn't like. Wall Street doesn't like uh, anything that is um, up in the air. Okay, I think that's it's it's a very very known fact that when there are things that we are kind of out of our control, um, ranges are going to tighten up, and that's kind of what we 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 want uh, to understand as traders. Uh, again, most days you're going to have really aggressive channels. Okay, because again, especially the stocks that I trade. Um, you know, the Tesla's of the world, Netflix, uh, Zoom, you know, beyond the video stuff like that, they're going to have natural big uh, average two ranges. So you can always find on most days some value uh, either to the long or to the short side. And obviously when there's a macro uh, confirmation, you know, you're going to get really, really exaggerated value. But when things are kind of in a holding pattern and we're, you know, we're kind of waiting to see what happens next. Uh, with a possible vaccine or stimulus. And again, everybody is hoping that the Democrats and the Republicans could kind of find their way and finally just kind of get a deal done, just get it over with. Um, again, it's not going to really reflect what is going to be the guaranteed next move in the stock market, but at least it's one last thing over our head. So hopefully uh, by the time this broadcast is released, hopefully there will be uh, at least a deal done, maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday, uh, Sunday night, maybe Monday, but hopefully just get it out of the way. One last thing uh, we have to talk about. So I think between now and the election day, I, I think if you are especially a day trader, uh, somebody who trades in the intraday ranks, I, I think you just have to come to the grips that every single day might not be your day. And I'm not talking about PL wise, I'm talking about the idea that something that organically you trade every single day is just not going to be available for you for a value to your situation. And if you look at most of the week, Monday through Thursday were really, really good. Matter of fact, if you look, uh, if you've been watching this broadcast, again, there was really good value uh, to the downside. Uh, we talked about the macro uh, move in the queues a couple of days ago that finally broke. We talked about uh, the queues reclaiming 
uh, supply on Thursday's video. And now we're going to kind of talk about what happens next, what I think is going to happen next, or it should happen next if technicals uh, confirm. But again, you have to be a grown up about these things. So again, if you're trading, you know, if you're trading the futures, for example, if you're a mini trader and the ranges are just not big enough for you to take advantage of a possible macro move, you can't squeeze more water out of a rock. You can't just put on a trade and hope it goes in that direction for exp expended measure potential. Same thing with stocks. Like if I'm trading uh, NVIDIA and NVIDIA is in a tight range for like five days and there's just no room for a trade, I have to be an adult about it or give away my money. Again, there's only two things uh, you can do. So I think going into this week, maybe even uh, into the November 3rd deadline, well, uh, election day, I think you're going to run into many more days that are in a holding pattern. Again, you have two choices, either try to squeeze water out of a rock uh, or maybe kind of sit those days out. Again, it's, we, we talk about it all the time. We don't trade because the market's open. We trade because we get value. So I think you're going to run into more days from now till November 3rd that are like that. But if we do get macro channels that do confirm, okay, and that's the most important part, the, the macro channel, not the intraday move that you can squeeze out 50 cents a dollar, dollar fifty in a trade. We're talking about the bigger macro channels. Once that confirms, that's when you can see a bigger measure of potentials. And those are the days you get your jacks, you get your queens, you get your kings, and you get your aces. And those are the days you do usually do very well. And that's kind of the segment where we're going to right now uh, in the queues. If, if you look on Friday, although if you look at the, the scoreboard towards uh, the end of the week, you saw the Dow and the NASDAQ down about 1% for the week, uh, the S&P about down five tenths of a percent, which is actually great considering we've been literally down for the last two weeks, right? 10 days in a row, two, uh, two weeks of trading, literally down. So the idea that the bulls actually held Thursday's area, held the 50 day moving average, and you can see here on Friday, reclaim the five, that is at least an initial baby step, bullish sign that this whole range, whole right, this whole downward range could finally be broken. And that's kind of where we segue going into this week. So here are the levels that I think are going to be very, very important. Now, again, we can't assume that these levels will be confirmed. We're just talking from the point of if this happens, then stock prices will follow higher. If we start closing below the 50 day moving average, obviously we go lower. So the big number going into this week on the QQQs is the previous day's high that got rejected off the five day moving average, which is roughly 286, right? 286, a reclaim uh, of the bulls and they start building over that number, gives us an organic move to 288, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's the birth of the trade. Again, if you've ever watched this broadcast and you really believe the theory of technical analysis works, which it does, um, you can see how twice it got rejected here at this 288 level, which is the 10 day. Um, I call the 10 day moving average, the birth of the trade. So if we can reclaim, and again, these are baby steps. You don't want to put the cart in front of the horse, but if we can reclaim Monday, this 286 level and close above 288, then we have a big macro potential, big macro measure potential to go right back to this 295, uh, 295, 297 level, the highs that we put in on October the 12th. So it's kind of important. Again, if you believe in the bull thesis, uh, the bull sentiment that this has to happen, right? 286, 288, and then we have a big, big moonshot uh, to the 295, 297 of it. However, right? Again, because there's always two sides of the market to trade. If we confirm the move that we had on the 22nd, which was Thursday, the 50 day moving average, any close below this 280, 281 level on the queues, again, is going to start a natural selling cycle. Now, again, a lot of you guys still don't believe the technical analysis is kind of important. You're, or you're going to believe, right? You're going to really believe if you're on the wrong side of where the cues confirm, either down, to, you know, down, move back to 277, or up to the move of 295. So again, you can say what you want. You can have your opinion of what's going to happen five years from now. We don't know what's going to happen a day from now. Let alone try to predict what's going to happen uh, after the election or even further down. So this is we we use technical analysis as a guide. Okay, there is no guessing. We're not smart enough to guess. Okay, I haven't yet met a trader who's smart enough to tell me what's going to happen tomorrow without technicals kind of matching up to their theory. So it's incredibly important that we let these areas play out. Okay, right? B basic stuff. 286 to the upside starts an initial move. 288 macro move starts an aggressive move. 
and they close below 281, we start having the conversation to the downside. Very, very important. Uh, if you go through charts, and again, I, I really encourage uh, traders to really, really embrace this business. Again, even if you trade once a week, okay, if you trade once a week, or if you're a full-time trader, okay, this is not a business that you can take for granted. This Again, this is the hardest business in the world for a reason. So even if you're trading once a week, you still have to put that full-time effort. So if you're going through charts, and again, every single trader, no matter if you're trading for 10 weeks, 10 years, or, or, or 30 years, you have to put in that work every single day, okay? And more on the weekends, because again, you at least have a little more downtime. But again, in this business, you, you get out what you put in, and there you can't skip steps, okay? You really can't. You really have to put in that work and make sure that you really understand what potentially could happen next, measure potential, or your potential dangers. If you go in every single day blind and your and your your only um, your only uh, research is five minutes before the opening bell to see what two dollar stock you're buying up five hundred percent, you're not trading. You're guessing. And again, you might as well uh, bet sporting events. At least you have a legitimate chance of betting. You know, betting the the, the favorite team. So be very very important. Uh, take this business. For, you know, take this business seriously and really do put in that work. So if you look at a lot of names today, and, and, and there's a lot of names, uh, especially in the NASDAQ 100, have already started breaking out ahead of the Q's confirmation, which is very, very bullish. Uh, if you look at charts like Google, big, big move on Google. If you look at Facebook, big breakout on Facebook. You're starting to see stocks, strong leadership. And, and again, granted, maybe they're running ahead of earnings season uh, this Thursday coming up. You have the Super Bowl of, uh, you have literally the Super Bowl of tech stocks. Uh, you got Google, you got Facebook, you got Amazon, uh, you got everybody, right? Uh, Microsoft. So this week we are uh, red snap dab into uh, tech earnings season. We're going to get a lot more uh, clarity. But again, it's a really good thing that as the market was coming in for two weeks, you're getting the breakouts and these uh, really big, aggressive, cult-like stocks, Facebook, uh, Google, and stuff. So it's very, very important that, again, we kind of try to get as many clues as possible. But again, really good stuff here. And if you start looking at charts that are about to come out of ranges, you know, names, you know, like a Microsoft, right? They're kind of mirroring the cues. You can see how, right? You can see really similarities of what the Q's chart looks like and what these individual equities look like. They're very, very similar. So if you look at Microsoft, again, it might be a day away. Uh, if you look, for example, like an Uber, right? Really, really good, uh, aggressive November and December $40 call buying. Again, it's very, very close. As the market was selling off this week, this thing was just building and building and building, and all it needs to do is confirm this channel here. So you're getting a lot of really good value. Even, this, even the leisure and the, you know, the leisure travel space. If you look like Las Vegas Sands, you know, it's like one day away, maybe two days away from really, really busting out. So you have a lot of really good value plays if these indexes confirm. Even banks, for example, and again, these brokers and banks, in my opinion, they like rally like literally twice a year. Even JP Morgan is very, very close to busting out this top of the channel. So everything is lining up for us uh, on the positive side this week. We just have to wait for everything to confirm. That's it. We have an opinion, we gather the data, we did the research, we're prepared for Monday's session. All we need to do is have these things confirmed. So, um, you know, again, I, I have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt uh, going into Monday's session. And again, assuming uh, there is a deal done or if there's not a deal done, at least we are prepared. We're not going into Monday morning uh, blind, you know, blind side of what could happen. At least we understand uh, where everything else. So, so let's talk about Friday's session uh, again. What, in my opinion, one of, one of the more slower uh, sessions of the week. Um, you really had to sit there tight and find the value. Okay, it just didn't just jump at you. It wasn't like one of those days if Amazon confirms and Facebook confirms. Although Facebook is very very strong. Um, it was one of those days you really had to kind of grind it out. And if you watch the action, the first, especially like the first hour, hour and a half or so, you really did not get aggressive option flow. Even, 
into next week's potential earnings. Nobody was really positioning. So you, you kind of saw the big aggressive, big money kind of on the sidelines and the action really, really reflected. And if you, if you look at the pivots, it really took some digging uh, to really get going for the day. And I said, this is one of the, one of the slower days uh, that I can remember in a very, very long time. So let's talk about this. Um, letter U gave the initial move uh, to 104. I, I still like this setup. It gave the initial move to 104, and then the second entry just never happened, okay? Just never happened. So I still like this letter U. It traded to 104. If this thing can confirm 104 next week, who knows? You can get a big, big run. But again, guys, this is what we talk about second entries. You, you let the stock go through the pivot, put in a high, let it retrace, and once it goes right back to that pivot, that is the second entry. So I still like this thing into this week, but again, just didn't confirm uh, the proper way. Uh, Uber, 36.90.37, the high of the day was 36.99. Again, did not confirm. Uh, this one was pretty good. We actually covered Beam uh, in the previous night's video. Uh, 36 needs to, be, uh, needs to build. Beam put up a really nice move here. So if you look at Beam, uh, here is the 36, confirmed the 36, went to 38 and change. Really, really nice move on Beam. Uh, congrats for all you guys uh, who took the trade. And again, that's the whole point of what we talked about. There wasn't value in, in beta, right? We haven't even talked about not one beta name yet. Again, there was a nice pivot on Tesla uh, towards, towards the middle of the day. But there was no value, at least for, from, from my point of view, from the stocks that I trade, there was really no big value there. Uh, DraftKings never got to uh, 44. Zoom never got to 531. Um, I like this Sonu, by the way. Uh, it started gapping up after the close. I think it was trading 1620s, 1630s. This is one to watch for uh, this week. Uh, it, it, look, at the, look at the chart. Look at the daily chart here. Uh, right? This is one to watch. Uh, if you could see the 60-minute view uh, after the close, it was trading 1620s, 1630s. I, I didn't see the news on it. But we got to watch this thing. They were coming in for, they were coming in for the December 1750 calls. I have to check um, I, I have to check if, uh, if, the, if, that's, if that covers earnings, but this is a really nice looking chart. Keep an eye on this thing. Uh, again, there was no, you know, nothing confirmed. Uh, Roku, 2550, 26 needs to build. Never even got close. Uh, Allergen was a big move. Congratulations for all you guys who, who took Allergen. But again, the common theory is no beta name uh, is confirming. Uh, Allergen uh, rejected 459 twice. Uh, needs to bill. Allergen took off. Uh, congratulations for you guys who caught this trade. Here was the uh, 459 and put in a $10 move. So big move on Allergen. Uh, and I kept on saying, I like sit tight. I mean, there's no edge here. Sit tight. Again, there's nothing, guys. Remember, there's absolutely nothing wrong of waiting for your setups to play out. Okay, it's it's not a it's not a measure of weakness. It's a measure of maturity. So it, again, sitting on hands when nothing is playing out is completely different sitting on hands when the market goes down. Again, there's people, a lot of people use the excuse, cash is a position, sit on your hands because they don't have the ability to trade from the short side. But again, if the market is dead and the ranges are contracting, the, the smart, the prudent thing to do, the adult thing to do is kind of wait till things play out. So again, big, big difference. So uh, big move on 36. Uh, here is the only beta name. Uh, here was absolutely the only beta name that took off for the whole day. And again, you can see here, painfully slow day. Uh, Tesla 414, strong base for cash flow. Uh, keep an eye on that. So here is 414. Uh, here is the 414 on Tesla. Let me just show you guys. So here is the whole 414 level here. You see this? 413.84, 413.39. So 414 started a really good move on Tesla, went as high as to 421. And you know, if Tesla starts building, who knows? Maybe slowly it could start moving back up. So that was literally the only beta name uh, that confirmed for the whole day, but that's okay. Okay, that's okay. It's, again, is what we say this all the time. It's not how many you trade; it's how many you trade properly. Uh, again, if if you if you have ever wondered about pivots and you want to check it out, uh, you know, try you know try the the, the um, try the the webinar for thirty days. Uh, if it's a good fit for you, it's great. Again, pivots are not for everybody. Again, if you have a two thousand dollar account, there's no way you could trade pivots. But again, if you've ever wondered about pivots, uh, you know, definitely check it out. Out. Uh, it'll definitely give you a kind of a, a different look at the market that you're used to, you know, not the normal. So it's kind of it's kind of a cool way to trade um, that most people are not um, not subjected to. So guys, have a great great weekend. Again, uh, bullish to start the week. We'll see if it confirms, uh, and if not, again, we we look back the other way. Guys, God bless. I wish you all the best of luck, and may God continue to bless you. Take care, guys.